What is this? Mabuhay, Agent Walker. Pure Mabuhay. Anyway, hello everyone, and welcome back to another review episode. In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing Almost Paradise. As usual, before I start the video, please subscribe to Numeric Reviews for those who aren't subscribed. Leave a like to this video, hit the notification bell, and share the video, and a small spoiler warning for those who still want to see the show. And now, let's get started with the video. Alex Walker, a retired DA agent, relocates to Cebu, one of the islands in the Philippines, in pursuit of a fresh start while managing his hypertension. Despite his retirement, Alex's undercover skills draws him back to the world of crimes as he assists the Mactan Police Department on a case-by-case -case basis. Along his journey of assimilation into the local culture, he forges new bonds and relationship, creating a new essence of family for himself. However, he also grapples with the complexity of his past, especially with his estranged family, whom he had left neglected due to his demanding job in the DA trying to stop the war on drugs. Here are the top seasons. Number 2, Season 1. The first season of Almost Paradise introduces viewers to the beautiful island of Cebu, steeped in rich culture and vibrant people. The viewers follow Alex Walker, a retired DA agent seeking peace and battling hypertension. He's unexpectedly thrusted back into the world of crime solving after a chance encounter leading him to collaborate with the Mactan Police Department. As the viewers witnesses Alex's unique undercover skills and his growing bond with the Mactan PD, particularly with Detective Kai Mendoza and Ernesto Almares, a new family dynamic begins to form for him on the island. As Alex immerses himself into the Filipino culture, viewers also find themselves engrossed in the cultural nuance of Cebu. Throughout the season, it becomes evident that Alex's hypertension isn't tied to his previous work at the DEA or working to solve cases in Cebu, but rather stems from an unresolved family issue. As the viewers try to piece together Alex's secretive personal past, his past outside the island resurfaces, bringing new challenges and threats to his newfound family and the tranquil island of Cebu. Number 1, Season 2. The second season of Almost Paradise continues to showcase Cebu's beautiful culture and atmosphere while delving deeper into the personal lives of the main character, Alex, Kai, and Ernesto. With a slight time jump allowing Alex to recover from his hypertension, we witness a dynamic shift. Alex now seeks permission to solve cases he is interested in, a reversal from the first season. The season also delves further into Alex's personal life as he re-enters the dating scene, offering a comedic aspect of his character as he struggles to navigate the dating scene. All while continuing to explore the culture and atmosphere in Cebu, the season draws inspiration from Christian Kane's other project, Leverage. Using similar tropes from a flashback episode to a heist episode, the viewers witnesses the creativity and uniqueness within the episode. With the introduction of a dangerous criminal nursing a grudge against Alex, the season unfolds as Alex must balance his personal life with assisting the Mactan PD in solving their cases. Here are the top 10 episodes and honorable mentions. Number 10, Rise of the Kalangai, Season 1, Episode 6. The episode delves into Kai's backstory, shedding light on how her past shaped her character in the series. We learned that her mother was tragically killed 15 years before the event of the series, and a police officer had a profound impact on her decision in joining the police force. This past connection becomes relevant as Detective Rabara, the same police officer from her past, visits to assist with the case. This sets the stage for a comedic moment with Alex determined to solve the case before Rabara determined to prove Kai wrong. Alex pulls Ernesto into helping him solve the case before Rabara, which had been strictly unauthorized by Chief Campo. The viewers are treated to clever and comedic tactics employed by the duo to gather evidence and information, including an epic sparring fight with Kai and Alex. Their investigation at the gift shop uncovers a shocking secret. Rabara was the one responsible for Kai's mother's death and now intend to eliminate Kai as well. The episode's emotional death reveals the complexity of trust and betrayal as Kai confronts this painful truth, pushing her into a vengeful mindset. However, in the end, Alex manages to calm Kai down, stirring her away from revenge and towards justice. In the end, Kai chooses to arrest Rabara, finally finding the closure she needs. Number 9, Reef Eel Soup. Number 9, Reef Eel Soup for the Soul, Season 1, Episode 3. Viewers embark on a culinary journey with Alex as he immerses himself into the local cuisine's vibrant flavors and unique recipes. However, a dark cloud descends upon this culinary adventure when a local gang sets fire to the restaurant they had just visited. Alex and Ernesto launches Alex and Ernesto launches an investigation linking this incident to a series of vandalism targeting local cuisines. The sudden wave of destruction with the eerie similarities highlights the profound significance of these culinary gems within the community. Determined to unmask the culprits behind these destructive acts, viewers are taken on a heart-pounding chase through the bustling streets of Cebu. This pursuit not only showcases the close-knit neighborhood, but also reveals the unwavering resilience of its inhabitants. Meanwhile, Kai, tasked with safeguarding the governor, 
delves into her own mysteries, unveiling the seedy underbelly of corporate interests attempting to corrupt government officials. As the two seemingly unrelated cases converge, Alex goes undercover to team up with Ernesto against the criminals, leading to action-packed sequences that illustrates their synergy. Alex's quick thinking and improvisational skills are tested to unearth deeper layers of the case. As the trio collaborates to take down a nefarious corporation fixer and throw out the company's destructive plans in the Philippines. As the episode concludes, viewers witnesses Alex finally assimilating to the Cebu culture as he gradually embraces the local cuisine, symbolizing his immersion into the Cebu culture. Number 8, Uncle Danny, Season 1, Episode 7. Diving deep into the past of Alex Walker, the viewers witnesses the dark, traumatic past he had endured during his childhood with the introduction of his Uncle Danny. This episode also sheds light on the past actions that made Alex who he is today. This painful history of helping his uncle with cons as a child unfolds through Alex's constant mention of his regret he had felt throughout his life, allowing us to empathize with the inner struggles Alex has kept hidden from both his local friends and the audience. Furthermore, the episode unveils a surprising twist. Alex has a daughter, a detail never mentioned in the series. During Uncle Danny's stay on the island, his past comes back to haunt him, in return starts haunting Alex as well. Alex's discovery of his uncle's hidden motives on the island involving counterfeit pesos used in illicit transactions becomes a pivotal moment. The tension escalates when an investigation led by kind Ernesto points squarely at Uncle Danny as the prime suspect. Instead of immediately arresting him, they agree to help him capture the man pursuing him with one condition. He must leave Cebu within 24 hours and never return. This arrangement offers Alex a semblance of closure regarding his troubled family history. However, it also suggests that his uncle is unlikely to change, as seen in his final act of stealing Alex's wallet. Number 7. Do Ex-Wife Machina, Season 2, Episode 5. Diving deeper into Alex's personal life, the viewers are finally introduced to Alex's estranged wife, Claire. Their reconnection unfolds against the backdrop of the unique culture within Cebu's penitentiary, featuring a dance sequence performed by the inmates. However, trouble arises when one of the dangerous inmates, Jace Varga, known as the waterboarder, escapes and seeks revenge on Alex for his involvement in his previous capture. When Bob, Claire's fiancé, gets mistaken for Alex and is kidnapped, the viewers witnesses the similar personality between Alex and Claire, as they disobey the request from Mactan Police Department to stay put and instead decide to risk their lives. Jace Varga's horrifying nature is shown as the viewers witnesses his pleasure of waterboarding and drowning his victims. When Alex is captured, a deadly showdown between Alex and Vargas ensues. Their ride culminates in a thrilling ride across the water park, including down a massive water slide. Amidst the chaos, an unexpected ally emerges, bringing home towards the story and giving Alex the upper hand in the final showdown against Vargas. The episode concludes on a touchy note, as Alex finally signed the divorce papers, providing closure to a lingering chapter from his past. The introduction of a new powerful threat towards Alex's life leads viewers to wonder about the next move Vargas will make against Alex, teasing a bigger storyline ahead for the season. Number 6. Old Time Season 2 Episode 9 The penultimate episode of Season 2 puts the viewers into a deep rabbit hole as the tension between Alex and his relentless adversary on the island of Cebu, Jace Vargas, escalates. When a murder unfolds in Anne's casino, her personality becomes clear as she starts keeping secret about the crime, leaving the viewers to wonder what other secrets she is harboring. Alex trying to showcase how much she cares for Anne, ignores her wishes, going rogue and trying to solve the case for himself. Meanwhile, Kai's potential career advancement introduces a new layer of complexity to the story. Her internal struggle between accepting a dream promotion and her attachment to the civil community further humanizes her character. The plot takes several unexpected twists as Alex, with the assistance of Rita, dives deep into solving the case. Their interaction creates humor within the episode, from Alex trying to censor pictures of the case from her, to Rita having numerous witty comedic comments in the next step in solving the case. Upon further investigation, Alex and Rita stumble upon a potential suspect. The Chemist, a notorious contract killer during Alex's childhood who formerly worked for the Dixie Mafia until his sudden disappearance. As the episode continues, the revelation that the Chemist may not be a single individual, but an old couple creates a web of intrigue and deception. When Alex is captured by the Chemist, the episode climax ends with a well choreographed sequence at the pen floor of Anne's casino, revealing who had hired the Chemist. The shocking reveal that Jace Vargas orchestrated these past events from behind bars adds a layer of mystery towards the storyline especially towards Vargas's criminal operation, leaving viewers excited but wondering what is ahead for the season finale. Number 5, All In, Season 2, Episode 7. The episode serves as a notable homage to another of Christian Kane's project, Leverage. Through its music, atmosphere. Through its music, atmosphere, clever plot twist and substantial nod to the Leverage franchise, it offers a unique viewing experience as it unfolds as the heist episode of the season. In this episode, Ad's newly opened casino is threatened by a famous casino thief group, the Trask Force. To assess the casino's newly implemented security system, she hires Alex to heist the casino to test the security. 
with the cooperation from the Maktan Police Department, allowing Alex to mention the classic leverage line, Let's Go Steal, the app so seamlessly integrates NOS to the leverage series. Viewers follow Alex, Kai, and Anisto as they go undercover at the casino to devise a plan to steal from it. Along the way, they assemble a super team, including Ernesto's cousin Angelo and Anne's uncle Johnny, setting their heist in motion. However, things take an unexpected turn when the task force monitoring the casino seizes the opportunity to execute their own robbery. Packed with twists and turns, the episode reveals that Uncle Johnny had been orchestrating a more elaborate scheme, anticipating the track force intentions and ending their reign of terror. With a numerous betrayal from the undercover employees at the casino who are part of the task force, and a revelation about the sinister nature of the casino security company, the episode cleverly weaves subtle yet unmistakable leverage references while maintaining its unique identity within the series. Number 4. Something Walker This Way Comes, Season 1, Episode 10 In the first season finale, viewers gain deeper insight into Alex's secretive past as several individuals from his history make their way onto the island. Throughout the season, Alex's personal life remained shrouded in mysteries, leaving audience with lingering questions. However, this episode unravels some of these mysteries when Alex's daughter unexpectedly pays him a visit. Their reunion starts on an emotional note, but quickly escalates into a heated argument about their shared past. It becomes evident just how much time Alex had missed in her life due to his undercover missions. This confrontation takes a toll on Alex's hypertension, hitting at a potential connection between his complex family history and his hypertension, adding a complexity to his character. As Alex recovers, the viewers witnesses his family from Cebu finally meeting Evelyn, his daughter. As Evelyn gets to know his newfound family in Cebu, she discloses certain key details about her upbringings with Alex, revealing many secrets about his character. Alex's worst nightmare comes into fruition as his former DEA partner, Todd Carpenter, announces his arrival on the island by taunting Alex and eventually kidnapping his daughter. Alex, determined to rescue his daughter, turned into a determined and relentless father, creating a relatable character for everyone who has children. After tracking Evelyn down, Alex's reunion with Todd turned into a cold breeze as he's forced to make a deal with him to ensure her safety. With the help of his family in Cebu, the viewers witnesses Alex deciding to finally confronting Todd. Together, they take on Todd and the drug cartels in a thrilling fight scene. The ultimate confrontation between Alex and Todd brings closure to Alex, allowing him to heal from the trauma of his past. The emotional impact of this moment is palpable, setting the stage for a fresh start for Alex and his daughter. Number 3. Finding Mabuhai, Season 1, Episode 1 The first episode of Almost Paradise introduces viewers to Alex Walker, a man who has dedicated his life to fighting the drug war but now seeks a fresh start on the island of Cebu in the Philippines. The episode showcases the beauty of Filipino culture, setting the stage for a unique experience, given the show's setting, unlike many other US television series. Trouble finds Alex even after trying to avoid it as he intervenes in an undercover drug operation leading him to join forces with Detective Kai and Ernesto from the Mactan Police Department. Vios witnesses Alex's impressive undercover skills throughout the investigation as he persuades everyone, even the drug dealers. However, they also get a glimpse into his troubled past as he shares his frustration about the international organizations like Interpol and the DEA, which he believes have lost sight of justice and policing, becoming mere soldiers in the drug war. Alex and the Maktan Police Department, determined to seek justice, devises a deliberate plan to sabotage the DEA's operation, getting these criminals arrested on a local jurisdiction crime, illustrating the show's unique approach to addressing such issues. As Alex slowly assimilates into Filipino culture and experiences Mabuhai, Viewers witnesses a new beginning for him. Filled with a unique culture and community to explore, this leaves viewers excited about what is next. Number 2, Bahalana, Season 2, Episode 4. In this flashback central episode, the viewers embark on a journey through a pivotal moment in world history, delving into the heart of the Philippines during World War II. When termites infest Alex's gift shop, he temporarily stays at Ernesto's home, highlighting the significance of family in Filipino culture. Through Alex's perspective, we witness the Alamaras family's harmonious coexistence, giving insight into the traditional family meals and their unwavering commitment to maintaining their household. Its realistic portrayal skillfully showcases the central importance of kinship bonds in Filipino life. Throughout his experience, the viewers learn of Ernesto's grandfather's experience during World War II where he started harboring hatred amongst the Americans. The episode uniquely uses flashbacks, reminiscent of the storytelling technique seen in Leverage, Dean Devlin's other project, setting this episode apart from the season. With the series' main characters stepping into the role of key historic figures within the flashback, the episode expertly weaves together past and present. During the flashback, the viewers witnesses the sacrifice made by Filipino during the war to liberate their land from Japanese occupation portrayed by characters from the series. As the narrative unfolds, the mystery surrounding these flashback events deepens when Ernesto's grandfather is attacked during his sleep. A determined journalist, 
and has taken it upon herself to unearth the truth become central in uncovering what happened during that event as many World War II veterans from Cebu, her sources, starts getting silenced. Drawing on the testimonies of these veterans, the journalist begins to piece together the puzzle, culminating in a revelation that challenges the current history. Ultimately, the perpetrators are brought to justice, and history is corrected. This moment of justice brings closure to Arnesta's grandfather, affording him the recognition he has long deserved, and allowing him to finally move beyond the traumatic events that had haunted him throughout his life. Here are some honorable mentions. It's Personal, Season 1, Episode 2, Lone Wolf, Season 1, Episode 8, the Magellan Cross Season 2 Episode 1, A Fish Folk Tale Season 2 Episode 3, Ghost Month Season 2 Episode 6. Number 1, Brigade Season 2 Episode 10. Alex takes on a dangerous undercover mission within the prison where Jace Vargas is serving a sentence without informing his closest friends in Cebu. The viewers witnesses Alex's danger in the prison with many inmates being part of Vargas' gang and an unsettling revelation about past murders. Despite the odds stacked against him, there's a glimmer of hope within the prison as Alex finds allies amongst the inmates who appreciate their second chance at life. Using their help, Alex employs clever tactics to manipulate the prison guards into conducting a contraband search at night, giving him a chance to dismantle Vargas's empire. However, his plan takes an unexpected turn when Kai and Ernesto intervenes believing Alex was sent to the prison to assassinate Vargas. Their unbreakable bond with Alex shines through as they put their lives on the line, investigating the situation despite the chief's strict instruction not to. As Alex finally reveals his undercover operation to Kai and Ernesto, viewers discover the depth of the conspiracy, including the presence of a mole within the Maktan PD. Kai and Ernesto, both determined to expose the mole and root out the corruption, work together with Alex to complete his undercover mission. The episode climaxes with a final confrontation between Alex and Vargas in the prison courtyard, unveiling many truths. It becomes clear that someone higher up is involved in Vargas' operation, which reveals the real person in charge, the prison warden, endangering Kai and Ernesto. However, when the chief and the rest of the Maktan PD arrives to arrest the warden and his guard, it provides an opportunity to apprehend the mole and shut down the entire operation. Meanwhile, as Alex and Vargas continue their confrontation, Alex unveils Vargas' disturbing obsession with drowning and exposes Vargas as the perpetrator of the prison murders. With this information, Alex weakens Vargas' influence over the other inmates, ending his reign. The episode ends with a tease of assurance, as the viewers throughout the season was teased about Alex and Kai's potential departure from the island of Cebu, but they instead have decided to stay, leaving the viewers to wonder what is ahead for Alex and his new family in Cebu. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Numeric Reviews for those who still haven't. Leave a like to this video, share the video with your friends, and hit the notification bell so they don't miss future videos. Also follow my Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit page on the link below to have further conversations. And I will see you soon for another review episode.